discussion on the biomechanics of the wrist with lunotriquetral instability. The lunotriquetral ligament is one-sixth as commonly affected by injury as its radial-sided counterpart, the scapholunate ligament. It's an injury that's less understood and is often confused with other ulnar pathologies. This ligament is similar to the scaphalunate ligament in that it is also C-shaped, though it thickens and is strongest at its volar aspect instead of the dorsal aspect. Within the proximal carpal row, the natural tendency of the scaphoid is palmar flexion. Oppositely on the ulnar side, the natural tendency of the triquetrum is dorsiflexion. In terms of biomechanics, and after many years of discussing different theories, the lunate and triquetrum are considered the so-called intercalated segment. The lunate is an intercalated bone. When an axial load is applied on the wrist, the load propagates proximally with 50% towards the ulnar side from the distal through the proximal carpal row. As the load moves further proximal through the lunate and the triquetrum, about 22% of it is displaced towards the ulna. The cause of this axial load displacement is evident when falling onto an outstretched hand or from impact of high energy forceful rotational trauma. The wrist may be in hyperextension, in extension and radial deviation, or in volar flexion. Complex injury like a perilunate dislocation is more common than isolated injury. Degenerative changes like positive ulnar variants leading to ulnar carpal impingement may be associated as well. Volar intercalated segmental instability, or VC deformity, can also be caused by advanced lunotriquetral injury. In VC, the lunate is pulled volar and flexed by the scaphoid and the intact scaphalunate ligament, causing the instability. Diagnosing a lunotriquetral ligament injury is more difficult than a scaphalunate ligament. The patient will characteristically present with ulnar sided wrist pain, point tenderness over the lunotriquetral interval, weak grip, instability of the wrist under load, painful clicking or clunking with ulnar deviation, and a fork-like deformity may also be observed. However, many patients do not present with obvious clinical findings. Because of this, several provocative tests were designed to help diagnose lunotriquetral joint instability. The Kleinman shear test is perhaps the most sensitive. This maneuver is approached from the volar side with a shearing vector across the lunotriquetral joint. If positive, the test results in crepitation or clicking, reproducing the patient's pain. It is compared with the opposite uninjured wrist. The lunotriquetral ballotment test is similar, though approached from the dorsal side of the patient's wrist. The Linscheid compression test is also referred to as the squeeze test. The clinician places a thumb on the ulnar border of the patient's triquetrum and pushes in radially. Compression force across the lunar triquetral joint elicits movement and or pain. Differential diagnosis include TFCC tear, ulnocarpal arthrosis, DRUJ pathology, extensor carpi ulnaris subluxation, among many others listed here. Viegas and others classified the lunotriquetral ligament injuries into grade 1, partial, or incomplete, with no VC instability pattern. Grade 2 complete tear, with compromise of the volar portion of the ligament and a dynamic VC pattern, which is only visible when stress loading the wrist. And grade 3 with complete dorsal and volar ligament tear, along with a static VC pattern, visible on standard unloaded wrist x-rays. In most lunotriquetral injuries, plain x-rays are within normal limits or misleading. Occasionally, there's a slight step off or break in Galula's lines along the proximal carpal row on the AP view. When secondary joint stabilizers are also disrupted, VC can be seen on the lateral view. In a study performed by Kamal, Abdel Sitar, and El Lethi in 2014, the conventional MR showed a sensitivity, specificity, and accuracy of 5%, 100%, and 79.5% respectively, compared to 91.6%, 100%, and 97.7% with the MRA or MR arthrogram for lunar triquetral ligament tears.
Wrist arthroscopy remains the gold standard for diagnosis. Fortunately, most lunar triquetral ligament tears with no instability improve with conservative measures. Appropriate treatment depends on the degree of stability, the chronicity of the injury, associated injuries, ulnar positive variants, and patient goals. The ligament has healing capacity and will allow healing in more than 80% of cases with proper immobilization as it is situated in a tightly coupled joint. Incomplete lesions without instability can initially be managed with conservative, non-operative treatments. Therapies include immobilization and splinting, activity modification, strengthening exercises for grip, peripheral joint mobilization, electrotherapy, and corticosteroid injection. For patients with acute or chronic dissociation or chronic tears that have failed conservative management, operative treatment is necessary to realign the lunocapitate axis, reestablish the rotational integrity of the proximal carpal row, and reduce the abnormal intercarpal motion. Finally, the surgical treatment options for lunar triquetral ligament tears depend on the stage or type of injury and ranges from arthroscopic debridement, coupled with Kirshner wire pinning of the LT joint, LT ligament primary repair, LT ligament reconstruction, and LT arthrodesis. Discussion on general surgical considerations in the treatment of injuries to the lunar triquetral ligament of the carpus. The lunar triquetral ligament is composed of three portions the dorsal, membranous, and volar portions. The volar aspect is the strongest portion of the ligament. The dorsal portion also plays a role in stability. The membranous portion of the ligament is not responsible for significant stability itself, but rather is seen as the link between the volar and dorsal portions. Tears of the interosseous lunar triquetral ligament often go unrecognized, and they don't commonly have clinical significance when found in isolation. The clinical significance of tears become pronounced when some intrinsic and extrinsic ligament structures of the carpus are also compromised. Ulnar sided stability of the wrist relies on the integrity of the lunotriquetral ligament, the ulnolunate and ulnotriquetral ligaments, also known as the cardinal ligaments, and the dorsal, radial triquetral, and scaphotriquetral ligaments. The dorsal and volar portions of the lunotriquetral ligament blend with the volar extrinsic and dorsal radiolunotriquetral ligaments to suspend the triquetrum. The treatment goals are to provide pain relief, to improve wrist strength, and to restore wrist kinematics. So what are the options for treatment of lunar triquetral ligament tears? Treatment options depend on multiple factors, including timing of the injury. These tears can be either acute, subacute, or chronic. Treatment also depends on the extent of the tear and on the presence of associated injuries or degenerative changes. The majority of isolated injuries, with no static instability pattern, are treated conservatively with a long arm cast for six to eight weeks. Special pressure padding is applied on the pisiform and over the dorsum of the distal radius to ensure proper alignment is maintained. Surgical repair or reconstruction should be considered when the injury fails to respond to conservative treatment, when dissociation with instability pattern occurs, or when the injury is associated with other injuries, such as complex wrist trauma. The anatomic lunotriquetral link can be easily restored in an isolated injury. This can be performed open or with arthroscopic assistance with either suture anchors or with a percutaneous Kirshner wire fixation to pin the lunotriquetral interval. For the lunotriquetral primary repair with internal brace ligament augmentation, Either a 3.5 or a 2.5 millimeter fork tip swivel lock is used along with 0.9 or 1.3 millimeter suture tape and 3.0 fiber wire. The 3.0 fiber wire is used for the primary repair of the avulsed LT ligament while the suture tape provides the augmentation to the construct. If the acute tear is associated with a distal radius fracture, Pinning of the lunar triquetral joint with a Kirshner wire is usually performed after proper reduction and stable fixation of the distal radius. In this particular case, the scaphalunate dissociation must be addressed initially. 
Perilunate dislocation is a severe traumatic injury of the wrist with complete rupture of the scaphalunate and lunotriquetral ligaments, resulting in a floating lunate. Here we see an example of a perilunate fracture dislocation. The high energy vector breaks the scaphoid, continues around the lunate, and tears the lunotriquetral ligament. The lateral x ray view shows the frank disruption around the lunate. This injury is usually treated with an open reduction of the fracture and dislocation, coupled with the addition of multiple pin fixations across the carpal bones. Another surgical option for perilunate dislocations is the use of internal brace ligament augmentation to maintain the suspension of the lunate, the reduction of the dislocation, and the stabilization of the carpal unit. These x-rays are of a 23-year-old male who sustained a wrist injury while playing sports. The PA view shows a rupture of Galula's lines. Galula described three smooth arch lines along the proximal first carpal row, the distal first carpal row, and the proximal second carpal row, breaks or step-offs of any of these lines are secondary to carpal instability patterns. The lateral view shows the dislocated lunate. See the complete loss of relationship between the lunate and the scaphoid. To maintain the reduction of this high-energy dislocation, the internal brace augmentation is secured using four 3.5 mm fork tip swivel locks with a 2 to 3 mm free tendon graft and 1.3 mm suture tape. The tendon graft and tape are first inserted into a blind socket drilled onto the proximal pole of the scaphoid. The same graft and tape are then inserted into a 10 mm depth blind socket on the dorsal lunate. Finally, one limb of the graft and one limb of the tape are driven from the lunate onto the distal pole of the scaphoid, while the others are inserted onto the triquetrum. These post-operative x-rays demonstrate the blind sockets placed onto the proximal and distal poles of the scaphoid, onto the lunate, and onto the triquetrum as part of the internal brace augmentation for this perilunate dislocation. Subacute lunotriquetral injuries are cataloged as those that are older than three months, but have not reached six months which is the marker for chronicity of instability or dissociation. In the presence of instability, as an active finding during arthroscopic evaluation, some additional treatment options are available, such as capsular thermal shrinkage and the arthroscopic plication or reefing of the ulnar carpal ligaments. This plication may be obtained by looping two threads of 2O fiber wire suture around the ligaments and tying them tight onto the capsule. Chronic lunotriquetral ligament instability, secondary to untreated full tears, can cause a static VC instability pattern. VC stands for volar intercalated segment instability, where the intercalated segment is the first carpal row. The lunate tilts into flexion, and a gap between the lunate and triquetrum is commonly seen as well. In chronic cases with static instability, it is not possible to perform a primary repair. The treatment options are LT capsulodesis, LT ligament reconstruction, and LT fusion. Dorsal capsulodesis can be performed to augment the LT ligament using an extrinsic ligament, most commonly the dorsal radiocarpal ligament. The dorsal radiocarpal ligament is split into two limbs, preserving their proximal attachment to the distal radius. Each half of the dorsal radiocarpal ligament is then advanced and secured into the dorsal lunate and dorsal triquetrum. The ligamentous advancement in this case is secured on the lunate and triquetrum with nano corkscrew anchors and supplemented with Kirschner percutaneous fixation of the LT joint. Different LT ligament reconstruction techniques have been proposed and used for chronic static dissociations. Partial or full autologous tendons have been used, rerouting them through the drill tunnels across the lunate and triquetrum to reinforce or to close the LT joint gap. The 360 internal brace LT ligament reconstruction technique entails the use of a free tendon graft looped around the lunate and triquetrum through dorsal to volar drill holes. The tendon graft is then augmented with 1.3 mm suture tape and secured with interference screws. Fusion of the lunotriquetral joint is another surgical option to address the kinematic changes caused by a chronic instability. However, in the presence of a static carpal collapse, like a dissociative VC pattern, an extensive intercarpal fusion would need to be performed.